Orly Rectory, an old Victorian building, gained infamy as England's most haunted house in 1929. Constructed in 1863, it was the home of the head priest or rector of Borley region. For over a century, Borley Rectory had been plagued by supernatural visitors and strange manifestations. Both visitors and locals have reported shadowy figures resembling headless men, galloping phantom horses, and walking nuns. Despite the claims, skeptics argued that tenants and tricksters had made the hoax, seeking money and fame. Now in ruins, some visitors allege that Borley Rectory is still plagued by paranormal activity to this day. Borley Rectory had a long history dating back to the medieval ages. Over the years, it hosted countless claims of ghost sightings in the neighborhood, as well as in the secluded house and woods. During its most active period, it was in disrepair and infested with rats running through its secret tunnels. In June 1929, Harry Price, an independent psychical researcher, received information about the hauntings at Borley Rectory. With the current rector's permission, his investigation of the rectory led him to discover its creepy history and legends. He started by examining the ownership history and concluded that the following individuals could be among the group of poltergeists. In 1381, Benedict Archbishop Simon of Sudbury was beheaded by revolting peasants in the region. In the 1500s, Sir Edward Waldegrave was a local lord. His residence and grave were believed to be near Borley Rectory. Reverend Henry Dawson Ellis Bull was the first rector of Borley until 1892. He died in the rectory. Reverend Harry Foister Bull also died in the rectory. After his death, observers believed the manifestations became more sinister. Additional ghosts, beside the landlords, also haunt the region of Borley Rectory. First is a French nun named Marie Lair. She renounced her vows to marry a Waldegrave, but was strangled and buried in a cellar. Now, people have claimed to have seen a nun walking through the garden in the nun's walk and a nun resting at the rectory gate. Secondly, there is a group of ghosts that originated from a local legend involving a nun, monk, coach, and a pair of horses. Here's how the story goes. Centuries ago, a nun and monk fell in love. Their love was forbidden, so they secretly met in the woods behind Borley Rectory. When their relationship was discovered, the monk was hanged, the coachman may have been beheaded, and the nun was walled up alive. It is said that their spirits still haunt the woods of the rectory. Lastly is the screaming girl. She was attacked in the blue room of the rectory. Trying to escape, she went through the window and held onto the window sill, screaming for help. Eventually, she lost her grip, fell into another room, and died. Different unknown apparitions were also spotted at the rectory, including a small man running around the bedroom, a man wearing a bowler hat, a woman dressed in grey, and a young Victorian boy. Even when the new rector, Rector Foister, and his family moved in, the haunting still happened and some became more violent. Besides the presence of shadowy figures, all of the inhabitants at the home and visitors experienced the following strange phenomena. Smelling pleasant and unpleasant odors, hearing the sounds of bells rumbling outside the house, footsteps, a dog walking, and objects being dragged, tapped, and knocked over. Hearing whispers, crying, singing, and wailing. Seeing broken, levitating, flying, and throwing objects, witnessing objects disappear and rising from the floor, the discovery of a human skull and other remains, seeing spontaneous combustion at random parts of the home, feeling touches and hair brushing, being slapped and physically harmed, hearing and seeing doors banging, closing, locking, and unlocking, seeing black hands around the doors, witnessing lights in the room that did not have any fixtures, feeling the sensation of an unknown presence, seeing writing on the walls, 
These writings mainly happened to Rector Foister's wife, Mrs. Marianne Foister. They often asked for mass prayers or Mrs. Foister's help. Due to paranormal activity and the state of the house, the rectory was listed for sale in 1935. In 1937, Harry Price was granted permission to rent the building for his psychical research. He opened the place to official observers and placed a newspaper listing inviting only professionals to participate in the occurrences at Borley Rectory. The listing drew in a large crowd, and almost all of them experienced some form of haunting in and around the rectory. In 1938, the property was sold for £500 to Captain W.H. Gregson, who moved into the rectory with his two sons. Mysteriously, the house burnt down in February 1939, when a wax lamp overturned in the hallway. Witnesses of the fire claimed to have seen figures in the building walking around the flames. Years later, Captain Gregson's son disclosed that his father was the one who started the fire. However, he wasn't the only one to expose part of the rectory's haunting as a hoax. At Borley Rectory, when skeptics retraced Harry Price's investigation, they uncovered an unpublished paper alleging that Mrs. Foister tended to fake ghost sightings. Furthermore, it was discovered that Harry Price had been secretly throwing pebbles from his pockets during the seances. In the book, We Fake the Ghosts of Borley Rectory by Lewis Merling, Maryling claimed that Foisters found it hard to survive on their church stipend of six pounds a week. He claimed that the Foisters, their children, and the servants of Borley Rectory boosted the home's ghostly reputation to make ends meet. They were encouraged to exploit the home's many hidden tunnels and rooms. When he stayed with the Foisters in his teens, the couple made him write and scribble on the home's walls. They also made him walk outside at night in a black cape and upturned collar, thus starting the myth of the headless man. Moreover, many of the mysterious sounds and sudden fires in the home were created by the Foisters. Maryling claimed that the couple pretended to be scared by an unknown knocking noise that was actually caused by their recently installed water heater. Additionally, the Foisters placed phosphorus underneath the floorboards, which would ignite when exposed to air. However, one thing Maryland can't explain is a situation that occurred during a seance. Everyone in the home was in the same room for the event. Suddenly, all the servant bells in the home rang at once. Now in ruins, some spectators insist that poltergeists are still haunting Borley Rectory. I know we have Halloween coming up, so I thought I'd include a video about a haunted house. If you have any recommendations for other spooky stories that you'd like me to research and make a video about, please let me know in the comments below. I would greatly appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel and like this video. You can check out these other two videos on the screen right now. As always, all sources are in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I would like to thank you for watching.